Hey, I'm Stephen, and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not new, cool. A month ago, with Tesla stock at $339, I posted a video called Waiting for Tesla Stock to Dip? Good luck because dozens of you had made comments about holding off buying until the stock dropped. I'll put a link to that video in the description. I really recommend you watch it first so this video makes more sense. In it, I outline why I believe the most probable direction for Tesla's stock to trend is up. The confidence, or perhaps arrogance, with which I made this statement impressed even me. But, guess what? The stock is up almost 40% since that video. Coincidence? Yes. Can I take credit for it? No. At least I hope not. But was it the most probable outcome? Yes. And that's why I was willing to make a strong statement about a future event. Now a few of you missed the point of that video. I didn't say Tesla stock will go up. I said, let's look at the probabilities and determine the most likely trend over time. This is an extremely important distinction. Anything could happen to Tesla stock. We're talking about probability, not certainty. So, why did Tesla stock gain $130 in a month and what's the most probable direction for the stock in the future? Spoiler alert, it's still not down. So in this video, in an effort to help you guys understand how I think and reason, plus to show you that reasoning playing out in the real world, it's time for a quick update. Q4 breaking records. As I predicted, Tesla reported record production and record deliveries in Q4. Ooh, that's awkward. We'll have to wait for the Q4 earnings call in a few weeks to find out whether they also achieve record profits and a record order backlog, but I believe the odds of both are high. And I also don't believe Wall Street is expecting this. If you can't read between the lines, allow me to spell it out. If Tesla beats Wall Street expectations, that is a good thing. Got it? The Model Y ramp. I also mentioned how important the rumor is that Model Y ramp was almost a year ahead of schedule were. It shows how quickly Tesla is learning and how fast they can now ramp production. A few weeks later, and not only did Tesla announce Model Y production will begin in China, which I also predicted, but that they're going to design a brand new vehicle in China for the global market. What are the odds of that being a compact car? Wall Street wasn't expecting this. Gigafactory 3 production. I also detailed how incredibly quickly Gigafactory 3 was ramping. Well, a few weeks later, and the first Made in China Model 3 customer deliveries have already taken place. And on top of that, we know the factory is now ramped close to its annual Model 3 capacity of 150,000 units. If you're not up on your history, 12 months ago, Gigafactory 3 was a muddy field. Can we all please just take a moment to ask one question together? What the actual f It appears Gigafactory 3 was built faster than any other factory of its size ever, by a huge margin. If anyone has examples to the contrary, please let me know. And it appears Gigafactory 3 has ramped vehicle production capacity to 3,000 a week in just three months, a fraction of the time taken in the US. Tesla is learning very fast. This matters a lot. Wall Street wasn't expecting this. I wasn't expecting this. In fact, some analysts today are predicting production of around 50,000 made in China Model 3s for the entire year of 2020. Many analysts are completely sleeping on China. Elon Musk said that there is going to be Model 3s manufactured from the China plant by the end of 2019. So far, the China plant is um, basically an open field with some digging going on. It's harder and harder to believe that there will be Model 3s coming out of the Tesla China Gigafactory by the end of the year. Um, but what Tesla doesn't have right now is a factory. So that's a problem. Gigafactory 4. There's almost daily updates about Tesla's 300 hectare Gigafactory 4 site. Progress is good news and there's lots of it. Information is leaking, plans and documents are popping up online, things are moving ahead swiftly and I expect a steady stream of news to come. Site plans have shown intent for on-site battery production and future expansion. We've learned that Tesla is targeting initial capacity of 250,000 vehicles per year in Stage 1, then 500,000 in Stage 2, and then 750,000 in Stage 3. This means Gigafactory 4, once ramped, in a single year could produce almost as many vehicles as Tesla has in its entire decade and a half history. Full self-driving. I also discussed Tesla's seemingly unassailable data lead in full self-driving. Funnily enough, a little Christmas present from Elon Musk arrived soon after, a preview of full self-driving. 
Users can now see more of what the software is seeing and understanding. Traffic lights, stop signs, disabled parking, traffic cones, you name it. This is a huge step forward. Full self-driving is way closer than people think and Tesla's gigantic data machine, its fleet of almost 1 million vehicles, is soaking up an extraordinary amount of data to improve the self-driving AI. No one has the data, no one has the fleet, no one is catching Tesla. The end. Expect more full self-driving milestones to come. The analysts are waking up. While there's still plenty of clueless clowns out there, we've seen a very strong shift in sentiment recently, as I predicted. First, we had Jim Cramer do a very vocal 180 and rant about Tesla on a number of CNBC segments. I gotta tell you, I'm dumbfounded too. Dumbfounded that Tesla stock hasn't gone even higher. Why? Because the stock market loves growth, and this market in particular can't get enough of it. This is a chart of growth, people. Tesla has growth in spades. Of course, investors will pay up for it. GM has barely any growth. Ford's actually shrinking. Nobody wants to pay up for stagnation. Plus, Tesla's got a rapidly expanding business in China, which is all the more impressive when you consider that Ford's China business is in big trouble. And GM just told us its Chinese business will be down this year. Just like last year, it fell 15%. People are mocking the fact that Elon Musk did a jig last night on the Shanghai stage where he unveiled the new cars. I say you can blame him. He built a new plant that can produce 150,000 cars, and he did it in just 10 months. Ford and GM will be struggling to get that similar plant up running in 18 months. They're more in the habit of closing factories than opening them. Even better, Musk says this new plant can get its capacity up to 250,000, maybe in a couple of years. As far as I'm concerned, the guy can dance naked after those accomplishments. I don't care. More importantly, though, these kinds of uh, comparisons between the old guard and the new ones, worthless. Wall Street will always pay much more for fast-growing companies with fabulous prospects. The Ford and GM versus Tesla comparison is just a parlor game. Tesla's got electric, electric vehicles. That's the future. GM has an electric vehicle that no one seems to want. Who the heck knows what Ford's up to? Who cares? Then suddenly we began to hear positive comments from guests on finance networks instead of endless negativity and FUD. It's almost as if a memo was sent out. Hey guys, urgent update. We no longer hate Tesla. We have changed our minds. Has everybody got that? We no longer hate Tesla. As sentiment continues to improve around Tesla, more and more sheep will follow the herd. This creates a feedback loop. When one prominent analyst upgrades the stock, those who are not independent thinkers take notice and often follow suit, and so it goes on. Even the thoughtful Gene Munster, a long-term but very reserved Tesla bull, let slip that he sees the stock doubling in the near term. That would be $900 a share. Okay, so like a, almost a double from here. I think so, and uh, this is not going to be a nice uh, uh, linear path there. This is, there's going to be a lot of chop in there, but that's how these trends happen. And you, know, you talk about, the uh, Craig talks about more competition uh, that is been happening for the last few years, and, and Tesla's maintained their, call it 70% share in the U.S. That's going to decline over time, no doubt. But we're talking about 450,000 vehicles this year in a market that's 90 million globally. Expect to see the tide continue to turn as more analysts wake up to Tesla. At the moment, most of them are still sleeping. But let's take a look at shares of Tesla over the last three months. As they have moved higher, so have price targets that have been put out there by the analyst community. In September, they were at about $270. Now it's up to $344. That is the average price target that's out there. Since October, you know, my lack of understanding in the stock is it's, it's palpable. I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, this stock has gone basically from 320 to the current levels in a straight line. So I just want to put that out there. Again, I'll say, you know, for the last month and a half, two months, completely lost. I could keep rattling off reasons, but I feel I've made my point. In summary, Tesla stock has trended up because a stream of good news has flowed from the company. They're breaking records, surprising everyone with their speed of execution, and basically just doing a whole lot of winning. Looking ahead, I see a string of positive news on the horizon and still very little in the way of headwinds. Does this mean the stock will go up? No. But from where I'm standing, it seems to me that the most likely direction Tesla stock will trend is not down. This is a growth story. The only question is whether or not Tesla can continue to execute on their plans. They haven't given me any reason to doubt them. Yet. Let me leave you with a final question. If Tesla does what they say they will do, what is the most probable direction the stock will trend over time? Exactly. So guys, please stop with the I'm waiting for the stock to dip bullshit. It's a fool's errand. Either you believe in the company and its ability to execute, or you don't. Either it's worth buying or it's not. Use your brain, do your homework, draw your own conclusions, and act on them. Stock investing is a long game. 
Imagine being the person in November 2010 who, having seen Amazon stock explode from $40 to 170 in a two-year span, said, the stock's gone up too much. I'm going to wait to buy when it dips. Guess what? It never did. I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem, and I love you all. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Were you waiting for Tesla stock to dip? Do you agree or disagree with any of my points? What do you think is the most likely direction for Tesla stock to trend over time? And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. This channel has kind of blown up since it launched, and I'm working on making the best possible content for you guys, but it takes time. Consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can continue creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. Either way, the best kind of support is you being here and watching, so thanks again. Three, two, one, go. 草原最美的花火红的撒热让你梦到天涯遍地是花香流浪的人儿啊心上有了他